Hi, my name is Rafik Zurab. I work on the Excel, Excel Fortran compiler team. Um, is it closer? Okay. So uh, I was saying that I work on the Excel Fortran compiler team. Uh, today we announced uh, the availability of uh, our Excel Fortran compiler uh, in June. And that compiler will provide um, CUDA Fortran support for the first time. Uh, so in this talk, I'd like to introduce some of the CUDA Fortran features uh, that I think make CUDA Fortran an easy to program um, language uh, for CUDA. And I'd like to introduce uh, some of the Excel Fortran features uh, that we've added this release uh, for CUDA. So uh, CUDA Fortran is a set of extensions to the Fortran programming language. Uh, they allow you to access the GPU. Uh, it, CUDA Fortran was created by the Portland group in 2009, 2010. It provides seamless integration uh, of the CUDA language into the Fortran language. Uh, you basically, basically extended the declarations and the statements in Fortran uh, so that uh, you don't have to call the CUDA API explicitly as much. Uh, it's functionally equivalent to CUDA C, so anything you can do in CUDA C, you likely can do in CUDA Fortran. So um, if you look at the example here, uh, you will recognize a lot of the memory types that uh, are available on NVIDIA GPUs. CUDA Fortran uh, provides attributes and uh, procedure prefixes to allow you to uh, declare variables and uh, functions of those types. Uh, the next, okay. Okay, I think there's a problem here. Okay, so if you look at this slide, uh, we I have a CUDA C program where uh, we're allocating and arraying global space in global memory, another array in managed memory. And in CUDA C, you need to know what API function to do to use, so CUDA malloc versus CUDA malloc managed. And when you're done with it, you have to call CUDA free to free the memory. If you look at the CUDA Fortran snippet at the bottom, uh, just using the attribute, attribute is enough. The Excel compiler will call the appropriate uh, malloc function. And when uh, the procedure scope is, uh, when you're exiting the procedure, uh, it will call CUDA free for you automatically as well. Uh, similarly, if you have allocation, deallocation, pointer assignment, all these are done via standard Fortran syntax, so you do not have to uh, uh, do any API calls for these. Uh, data transfer is done via assignment. Uh, so if you look at the top CUDA C program, uh, I'm trying to assign uh, one to every array element. I'm trying to then copy uh, from uh, the device array to the host array, and then I'm trying to add one to the host uh, variable. It's not very obvious from the code. You have to read the code carefully, and you have to know what each API function does. In CUDA Fortran, all you need to do is just say that it is device, and it's the compiler's job after that to uh, figure out the best API call to use and uh, to break up the assignment into its components for copying from the host to the device and then incrementing by one. Uh, by the way, there is a typo in this slide, so uh, if you spot it, uh, let me know and uh, uh, we can talk at the booth. Uh, CUDA Fortran also allows you to do asynchronous data transfer. It's available via assignment as well as APIs. Uh, so in this example, uh, CUDA 4 is a module that provides you with access to the CUDA runtime API. Uh, the pinned attribute, uh, just as you'd expect, is something that would give you access to uh, page locked memory. And then uh, you probably recognize the names CUDA stream create. Uh, that is a CUDA runtime API call uh, to create a new stream on the device. And then uh, CUDA Fortran has CUDA 4 set default stream, and that changes uh, the default stream instead of s stream zero. Now you can use any stream you want, and it has the side effect of basically making your assignments after that and kernel calls asynchronous. Uh, 
So um, the, the two assignment statements there are asynchronous because we're using pinned memory. If you were not using pinned memory, then they will be synchronous. Uh, so CUDA C provides a lot of libraries uh, for uh, BLAS, uh, Fourier transforms, uh, sparse algebra, random. Uh, CUDA Fortran provides Fortran modules that provide bind C interfaces for all these. And uh, Excel Fortran provides all of these as well. Uh, speaking of Excel Fortran, Excel Fortran is a full featured Fortran compiler that's been targeting power since 1990. Uh, we were one of the first compilers to uh, provide complete Fortran 2003 support. Uh, and we also provide most of Fortran 2008 and almost all of, Fortran, of TS29113, which is the C interoperability TS, which is going to be part of Fortran 2015. Uh, the compiler team works closely with the Power Hardware team, uh, so we take maximum advantage of the IBM Power processors, uh, and we are sometimes even involved in the design in terms of giving feedback to the hardware team. Uh, so as you'd expect, uh, we have a very uh, good optimizer for power, and uh, this optimizer is available on all IBM platforms, so it's available on uh, Power for AX, Power for Linux, and even for ZOS. Okay, so if we look at this table here, and I'm gonna start with the top left. If you have Fortran source, uh, it goes through the Excel Fortran front end. Uh, Excel Fortran front end produces um, W code, which is the Excel compiler intermediate representation. That goes into the high level optimizer uh, that does data flow optimizations, loop optimizations, um, can also do inlining. Uh, that produces W code again. And uh, if you're doing host programming or just normal CPU programming, that would have gone to the low level optimizer, which have, would have done some low-level optimizations like register and, and then register allocation and then just generated the, your dot .o for you. Uh, in the device case, we have this component called the partitioner and it's partitioning the code at the IR level. So some uh, CUDA compilers, like for example CUDA C, partitions at the source level. Um, our, our compiler partitions at the IR level and as you can see here, the flow for the host code, which is the blue stuff, is exactly the same with and without CUDA Fortran, which means that you are maintaining all the optimizations that you would have gotten for your CPU code. You're not losing any of those. For the device code, uh, our high-level optimizer would run on the device code, so uh, there's the potential for improvements there. After that, we run the device code through a uh, W code to LLVM, LLVM IR translator. And from that point forward, um, you get NV, NVVM IR that goes through the CUDA toolkit and uh, is optimized by uh, lib NVVM and PTX assembler. So in this way, basically you're getting two sets of optimizations. You're getting the optimizations from the CUDA toolkit out of the box, but you're also getting the optimizations from our high level op optimizer. So CUDA Fortran has, uh, Excel Fortran has some uh, enhancements for usability. Uh, if you programmed in CUDA C, you probably uh, have a, ha had to write a macro around every API call you made, like for example, check CUDA or something like that, that basically check the return of the API call. If it's not CUDA success, then you call CUDA get error string and you print uh, an error. We have a compiler option that does this automatically for, for you for um, every API call if you want or for compiler generated API calls. Uh, the default is to only check the compiler generated API calls so that could be kernel calls or assignment or allocate. Uh, and uh, if, if you want you could make it check everything or you could even make it check uh, user defined functions. So we have an attribute that you can uh, place on user defined functions to tell the compiler you wanted to check the return for you. Uh, we do not clear the CUDA error state so um, we check the return of the API but if you have your own code that checks the return 
we're not, because we're not clearing the error state, uh, your code will not be affected. And we also provide the ability to either stop the program if an error is detected, or to continue in case you have your own error checking. So our default is to continue, but uh, by, via environment variable, you can make it stop. So here's an example. Uh, I have code that calls a kernel, and the number of threads is just uh, input from the command line. On the current CUDA GPUs, uh, you cannot have more than 1,024 1, uh, threads in a block. So in this program, uh, I tried putting 2,048. And when I run the program, um, just compile it with XLCuff, the name of the program, no options. Uh, it will give you the file name where the error occurred, the line number, and it will tell you the API call that failed. So in this case, it's CUDA launch kernel. It will give you the error code from the API call, and it will also give you the error string uh, as returned by the to CUDA toolkit. And in this case, it's going to continue after giving you this warning, but if you set an environment variable, it will the error recovery equals no, it will stop the program for you. Um, OpenMP4 and OpenMP4.5 are device-independent GPU programming models. If you um, view CUDA Fortran as higher level than CUDA C in terms of uh, how you program in it, OpenMP is even higher level than uh, CUDA Fortran. Uh, it abstracts more uh, of the device access APIs and uh, it shifts the burden uh, of explaining the hardware to the compiler. Uh, this has the advantage of uh, increasing programming practice productivity, but you have to have a very good optimizing compiler. Uh, so let's look at an example. I have uh, 4096 by 4096 matrix multiplication. Uh, in any OpenMP compiler, this will, uh, you'd write a loop that, like a nested loop that will multiply the matrices. And uh, I think every OpenMP compiler is going to use tiling to uh, distribute the multiplication between threads. Um, however, not every OpenMP compiler would use shared memory because shared memory is uh, more of a hardware thing in the NVIDIA GPU might not be available in general. And uh, in, if you were programming in CUDA Fortran, as a user, you have the ability to write that yourself using a shared memory. But programming in uh, OpenMP, Basically, you're at the mercy of the compiler. If the compiler does not use shared memory, uh, you will not get it. And so if you look here on the left, this is just the, these are numbers with tiled but not shared. And uh, this is just with a research OpenMP compiler that does not do shared optimizations. And you can see that it's uh, very much slower than CUDA C and CUDA Fortran. When we turn on tiled uh, and shared memory, you can see also that we can gain uh, quite a bit of performance compared to just tiled. So um, I think that's an advantage, at least in the short term, for CUDA Fortran, because uh, you can optimize your code right away. And I think over time, though, like OpenMP compilers are adding optimizations, and you should be able to get the same amount of optimizations. You might be asking, like, why is this lower? Uh, several reasons. Uh, one of them is uh, high-level optimizer did some optimization, but that doesn't cover the whole thing. Another one I suspect um, is column major versus row major might be giving better coalescing, but uh, I'm still checking on that. So um, just to sum up, uh, CUDA Fortran gives a high-level uh, GPU programming uh, model it's function equivalent to CUDA C. Uh, you can take full advantage of the NVIDIA GPUs. And it's available in our compiler, and of course, PGI's compiler. Uh, it will be available in our compiler starting in June. And if you have any questions, uh, please feel free to visit our booth. It's right at the corner. Thank you. <laughs>